Originally, I came in 1981, I think. Yeah. Um, through meeting Margaret in my wife uh, in London. Um, she came to London as a student and kind of got stuck there. She'd been living there. She went there when she was 18 to go to art school. Mm -hmm. And when I met her, she'd been there 18 years. So, like, half her life. And um, she brought me to Jamaica, really, in, in 1981. And then I visited about three or four different summers. And being a teacher, you know, it used to be the whole summer, like six weeks at least, you know. And um, from when I first came here, I thought, well, I could live here. I know it, I could live here, you know. Um, and then we both got made redundant from the London Teaching Service uh, by Maggie, Maggie Thatcher. Yeah. Mm, that's not a whole story anyway. <laughs> so, you know, um, so we thought we'd come, I liked it here, and this is where she was from. Her family was always here, so she used to come back and visit the family, you know, all the 18 years she was up there. So, um, so we thought we'd come and try it for two years, and here I am, 22 years later. <laughs> Yes, this is in ship last year, you know. Okay. It's Maddie now. Go <laughs> <laughs> guys, go guys. Yeah, basically, yeah. 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 Um, from when I was at art school, I remember we, we had to do a dissertation thing, you know, as part of our final thing. And I wrote about Matisse because, you know, Matisse was the colour painter. Um, but I also latched onto a lot of English painters who were, colour was a big, uh, kind of trendy thing at that time. Big colour paintings was a kind of trend in painting in the, um, in the late 60s, early 70s. Oh, wow. And I guess I tapped into that, you know. And I was really stuck with it, I suppose, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, a big influence when I was a student was um, post-war American painting, people like Jackson Pollock, um, De Kooning, the whole New York School, Rothko, especially the colour-based ones, Rothko, I don't know if you know Barnett Newman as well, and Clifford Steele, that was the big, big, large-scale colour-based abstract painting, you know. And then there was like a second generation after that, it was called post-painterly abstraction, because it was more, it was flatter, it wasn't using paint so much, but then there was a reaction against that again. It's a, it's a whole long story, you know. Yeah. And there was a there was a whole group of English painters, that were, or European, I should say, not necessarily English European painters, who were influenced by that, but retained some of previous European painting, you know, like Matisse, Picasso, those people. Mm -hmm. So, so um, it's a combination of things. And it's, A lot of the colour-based painters, you know, going right back to people like Matisse and stuff. Uh, even okay. before that, you know, Delacroix, some of those French painters, um, often used to travel south because of the light. You know, talk about the light, about how you see colour a different way in certain lights. And um, I thought about that when I first came to Jamaica because, because colour looks different. Things look different here, you know. When I go back to England now, and you, 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 you fly in over, you usually leave here at night and you fly in early morning into London, you fly over the English landscape, you look out the window of a plane, and it all looks so muted, you know, it looks mm. like, when you come back, the opposite, you know, as you come further south, the sun gets brighter and the light gets brighter and brighter and brighter, you know, the colour stronger and stronger. Yeah. So that's part of it. So did, yeah, you, yeah. did you see a difference in the world or did you feel a difference? I, I think, Looking. yeah, I think living here has, has, has made something which was like I was interested in, you know, this kind of colour thing, has reinforced that, mm. to put it like that, yeah. And there's quite a lot of northern painters who have be, been strong colourists, yeah. but it's often involved them going south, yeah. looking yeah. for the light and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So, I may be part of that, kind of the same, yeah. same tradition or something, you know. Well, I mean, one of the things I could never take in England was the kind of racism, which is in institutionalised in a sense, even now, you know. Oh, in a lot of European countries, it's not just England, mm. but 
it's changing. It's got better. It's got better. It had, it's had to get better, you know. But um, from a really early age, I could never take that. I could never understand that, you know. And, and there was one element of England that I just was never sorry to see the back of. Mm -hmm. And when I came to Jamaica first, that one of the things, I mean, I know it's a kind of cliche, the whole thing, you know, out of many one people business, you know. Um, but I, I felt that Jamaica was, was really advanced in the sense of taking that on. Mm -hmm. Maybe they didn't have any choice, but, 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 but it has been taken on and it has, it, to, me, to me it seemed like the way the whole world has got to go eventually, you know. The way, and the, 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 in Jamaica, they, they dealt with it maybe better than in a lot of places in the world. That's why I felt, I felt that Jamaica was in fact very advanced in that respect, you know. Might not be economically and all those things, but in terms of like hu human relations, you know. So, I'm still there. I mean, the kind of art that I liked when I came here that I saw was mostly unschooled stuff, you know, intuitive kind of things. Because the people who'd been away to Europe, um, what they did was like weak versions of what I was very familiar with, you know, that's right. mostly, mostly, not all, but, you know. So, I mean, the kind of stuff that Douglas often deals in, in fact, here, you know, was the kind of things like really Joseph and those kind of things, you know. But what, with that in mind, what did you see in that? What, what really grabbed me well, about that stuff? What really grabbed me was it was like nothing I'd ever seen, you know. So it was fresh, you know, really fresh to me, you know. Um, I mean, I'd been seen African art as in a kind of lectured situation, you know, been shown it, you know, um, which has similar kind of maybe traditions, you know, which are outside of Europe and, and America. But there was this unique thing in Jamaica that's Jamaica, you know, yeah. thing, you know, and maybe has some African strands in it yeah. from heritage and stuff like that. But um, it was something new I hadn't seen before, so it was that really. Yeah. I don't know that I would really have done anything different to what I've done. No. You know, I mean, it's been a kind of strange journey. I can see that looking back, but I, I don't really regret any of it, you know. I'm, I'm not getting older now, but I've done a lot. I said to my mother a few years ago, I said, you know something, if I went tomorrow, I know I've lived a life. I've lived a life, you know, and I, I really don't have any regrets, you know, that I've always done what I wanted to do. Some selfish things in that, you know. Do what you want to do, that's what I would say, you know. That, that's what I've always you know, gone, gone with. I always remember the thing from Shakespeare, not that I'm a great literary person or anything. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a particular thing in, in, in one of his plays, I don't even know which play it is. Something about, to, to thine own self be true, and then day follows night and night follows day, no problem kind of thing. You yeah. know? should always be true to yourself. And that's what I basically always kind of try to maintain. It gets you into problems sometimes. Eh? And, uh, <laughs> But um, that's just basically it. Yeah. If you're ever in it for the money, you might as well give up, you know, because if I'd have ever been in it for the money, I would have died of a broken heart many, many years ago, you know. There are much easier ways to make money than yeah. art, you know. Yeah. But it's a kind of bug that gets, gets into you. Yeah. Jamaica's a bit like that too, I think. Yeah. yeah, Jamaica gets into your blood somehow, you know. Because I can see the downside of Jamaica too. You know, I lived here long enough to be aware of, of all that. You know, I lived inside of Grant's Pen even last night, here gunshots firing away there, and that, you know, all that thing, you know, is quite scary sometimes, you know. It can be a very dangerous kind of place to live. But there's something here. When people ask me in England, you know, how it is in Jamaica, I say one thing about Jamaica is you can never get bored. <laughs> and that's, that's true as true. You know. You have to, you have to be, Look, you know, you can, that's right, for better or for worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's enough, I don't know. <laughs>